Okay, everybody, take two, take two. Take one, I accidentally used my webcam uh, microphone and woo, that was bad audio. So we're going with take two. Hello, everybody, welcome to how to really use ChatGPT plus GPTs. Uh, my name is Zane and I am with Really Easy AI. A uh, quick uh, word about Really Easy AI, we do offer consulting and training and we do have certified people on staff who uh, are certified in AWS machine learning, Azure data scientist, and Azure AI engineer specialist. So got a lot of good talent. Uh, please reach out to us if you would like to get some training or consulting. With that said, let's begin with the quote of the day here. Uh, I definitely fall into the camp of thinking of AI as augmenting human capability and capacity. That's Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, and I absolutely agree with that sentiment. I believe artificial intelligence absolutely augments your ability to um, uh, to do tasks, uh, and I and I love it. Now, having said that, I'll share a little personal info with you. I have two boys. One's uh, twelve. One's thirteen. And I do not let them use AI uh, when they are doing schoolwork. Only after they're done with schoolwork do I let them use AI. Now, why, you may ask. I'm an, I'm an AI professional. It seems kind of hypocritical, doesn't it? Not really. I believe that AI augments the adult human experience. But the youth human experience needs to expand those synapses, fire you know those neurons get them built get them all you know that that network built out in their brain and then they can begin augmenting that with ai uh it is you know and again there's still lots of studies that need to be done but we all know how it goes because we've seen it ourselves you can you can prove it to yourself i grew up in a time when there were just typewriters and they didn't do anything you just typed with them uh, the old ibm selectrics my mom was a secretary actually and i can remember a time when your spelling had to be perfect or you know you had to redo a page or get what we call liquid paper a lot of you probably never even heard of that um, so that was just crazy crazy times and then i've lived through the times as all this has has evolved into where we are today and let me tell you i went from being an exceptional speller to one of the worst spellers I know because I don't care anymore. If I misspell something, I get the red squiggly, I right click and boom, and I'm off to the races. That's not a problem. That's not a bad thing. I don't consider it a bad thing, but I do recognize the fact that my brain has adjusted to this new paradigm. And likewise, uh, I think that a lot of you've probably lived similar experiences, whatever it is. So, I, I am fully in favor of having AI augment the adult work or um, home experience, but I am definitely urge you to make sure your children are not using AI to um, do things that give them like the answers or quick and easy path to um, you know solving their problems. I won't let them use AI. I'll actually go full Luddite on them and they have to sit down and do it with paper and pencil. Now, that may be a little extreme, but that's how I approach it. And then when they're done with school and they've made their grades, which by the way, both are straight A students, thank you very much, um, then I give them AI, they go nuts, they do the Roblox and all that junk. And, and that's fine, that's absolutely fine. And they get full on, full paid versions of ChatGPT. So they can do pretty much whatever they want. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd throw that in there and give you some insight. I know a lot of you are doing this for work, but some of you are also doing it for yourselves or maybe even for your kids. There are paths to doing uh, AI with your kids, setting up tutors. We're actually going to look at one here, I think, in a minute. So there's, there's a way to do it right, but certainly don't just let your kids have AI and just get answers. I think it, it does them a disservice. All right, moving on. Uh, so why ChatGPT Plus? Again, I put this justification in every slide deck because I want to make sure you understand that I'm not just saying, you know, I, I don't get paid by OpenAI or anything. Um, I don't get any kickbacks, although I wish I did as much as I use it. Uh, I, I fully buy into the ChatGPT Plus value, right? And that's today. Now, tomorrow, it could change. But today, the value is there. For 20 bucks a month, I get supreme knowledge, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, what kind of supreme knowledge? If you aren't aware, 
Well, how about this? ChatGPT, the old version, not the version we have now, the old version, the version before this one, um, it passed the U.S. medical licensing exam with flying colors. It also diagnosed a 1 in 100,000 condition in seconds that would have taken doctors months to figure out. By the way, it also passed the bar exam to be a lawyer. So it can be the best lawyer, the best doctor you ever had. Kind of. By the way, it passed a whole bunch of other exams, in case you're curious, and I will include the links to all of this in the description for the video so you can go see this for yourself. By the way, uh, for those who are new to my series, I also include the slide decks because I would encourage you to take this and go teach others about this stuff. So I'm going to give you my full slide deck so you can go off and maybe teach a, you know, a bunch of kids or a user group or maybe um, some adult groups that you have. That's really what I'm trying to hit with this. I'm really trying to educate folks on how to use AI the right way as an end user right now with this particular set of series I'm doing. So go out there and show them how to use AI properly. Uh, so if you're going to get your hands on it, and you should, and yes, you should pay the 20 bucks, uh, I'll include these links so you can go off and get it for, uh, you can go to the website and get it, also get it for your uh, mobile phone, and you should absolutely get it for your phone, because I use it more, almost as much, rather, I was about to say more, I really don't use it more because I do this a lot, all day, but I use it um, as much on my mobile as I do uh, for the web. So uh, it's, it's kind of half and half because I'll use it for all kinds of stuff. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was at the dentist office not too long ago, and there was a legal form I had to sign. So I went ahead and used my mobile app, snapped a picture of it, and asked ChatGPT, do you see any problems here? It said, nope, this is boilerplate. It's fine. You're protected. HIPAA, blah, blah, blah. Boom. No problem. I, I had no problem signing it. In the past, I would have just been like, all right, I just got to gotta sign it. I don't have time to read it. But now I can use ChatGPT to tell me if there's some potential danger with me signing this document. And, and obviously there's not. It's the dentist. I mean, I don't know too many evil dentists out there. All right, uh, upgrading. So it turns out that the folks at OpenAI are limiting, let me fix that real quick, are appear to be limiting the, um, the upgrade pass. So if you get a, an account, a free account, and try to upgrade, you may not be able to upgrade at this point. And I want you to be aware of that. They have uh, shut down the upgrades for the time being. Today is November 26, 2023. Uh, they shut down the upgrades on November 15th, I want to say. Let me double check. Uh, open AI upgrades. Uh, closed or something along those lines. Oh, here we go. OpenAI pauses new subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, what's the date? I thought I saw it real quick. Yeah, November 15th. Yep. So it wasn't too long ago, but yeah, they have paused the upgrades uh, to ChatGPT. God, man, just a million commercials. Uh, Pause new ChatGPT Plus subscriptions in the wake of significant usage. Yeah, after Dev Days, where they announced a whole bunch of new features, and most notably the newest version of ChatGPT, which is ChatGPT4 Turbo, uh, there was just this huge influx of users and it, they couldn't handle the load so they've shut it down those of us who are grandfathered in can use it those of, of you who are doing it for the first time you won't be able to get it right away but you will be able to get it they are going to be scaling up their servers of course and uh, they want that money now this one i found interesting uh, listings for supposed chat gpt plus accounts have been appeared on auction sites like ebay that's freaky man i okay people are selling chat gpt plus accounts on ebay what the hell okay i you don't need to go to those links unless you have some kind of weird critical chat gpt need which you know i couldn't think of one there's you, you can usually balance this out by using free chat gpt and then using uh, google bard and anthropics claude if you need to all right um, so anyway, there it is. It's paused. So moving right along. So let's talk about GPTs. That's why we're here. And by the way, this will be a shorter video than most of my videos because we're just going to jump into it, use them, and really get you into what they are. Um, so let's start with the basics. What the heck are they? Well, uh, basically, chat GPT uh, on its own is a wide open field. Here I am in chat GPT. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen this interface. I'm in ChatGPT, ChatGPT Plus, so I'm using ChatGPT4 Turbo. And I can type in whatever I want and get back whatever I want. The problem with that is 
I have to really kind of know what I'm after and also know how to ask the question, something we call prompt engineering, which we will have a session on later on, by the way. Uh, so that can be problematic. And if I don't have that expertise, it can be difficult for me to get out of it what I'm trying to get out of it. Uh, so there needed to be an answer to that. Well, the answer turned out to be, let's take ChatGPT, let's give it specialized instructions for certain types of activities, and we'll call the combination of those two things GPTs. And so that's what GPTs are. GPTs are literally taking the core base ChatGPT, adding a whole bunch of specialized instructions, specialized prompts, specialized documents in some cases, a variety of other things, a mix of a variety of other things, and giving you a highly specialized version of ChatGPT that you can use. That's really what it comes down to. It's pretty cool. Um, how do you get them? Well, let me show you. So to get chat, to get to the GPTs, uh, just under where you start a new chat, right here where it says ChatGPT, just click on Explore and that will expose the GPTs. Now be careful, uh, there is an option to create a GPT of your own and you're welcome to explore that. I'm sure, go nuts. Uh, however, I'm not gonna be teaching that today. That is not my goal today. This is strictly an end user discussion. So I'm gonna be showing you how to use GPTs, not create them. But yes, rest assured, as we kind of stair step our way up the knowledge level, I will be showing you how to create custom GPTs as well. So GPTs, uh, I like talking about GPTs just after we got finished talking about plugins because plugins go out to third parties and connect to third party applications. If you haven't seen my plugin video, you should go back and check it out. Whereas GPTs really just take chat GPT and layer on top of it. So instead of going out to a third party, it's really just chat GPT with extra stuff layered on top of it to make it easier for you to use it. And that's really the goal here, is to make it easier for you to use it. Now give me just a minute, I'm headed to get, uh, I wanna set up for some of the things that we're gonna be doing here. And I should have done that ahead of time, I'm so sorry. All right, there we go. Uh, nope, 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 there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead then. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at, uh, I believe that's what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, I'm showing you how to get there. Yeah, using GPTs. So we're just gonna jump right into this. I mean, this is, again, this is just get in and use it time. So we're gonna jump right into this and use some of these. Probably won't use them all, but I wanted to show them to you. Also, I wanna point some things out. If you saw my plugin uh, demo, then, uh, or the session that we did, uh, you'll realize there's a whole lot missing here. First and foremost, as I look at these GPTs, you notice they've all been created by ChatGPT. And as I scroll down, there's a load more. So I click on load more and that's it. It's not loading more. Wait a minute, what's going on? Is this, is this it? Well, no, this isn't it. There's a ton of GPTs out there. The problem is they haven't implemented the GPT store yet, which is coming, presumably. And there is no search functionality. You notice it is distinctly missing. So there's no way for you to know about all those wonderful custom GPTs that are out there, except for the ones that they've exposed to you right away. In time, there will be a GPT store. You will be able to search it just like you can with plugins and you will be able to pick and choose the GPTs you want. But until that time comes, if somebody creates a GPT, they have to send you a link so you can use the GPT. Otherwise, you don't know about it. It's not fun. Now, a lot of people are putting up their GPT links on their website, so you may be able to search and find a GPT link that way. Um, so there's a variety of ways you can get to other GPTs, but right now, this is the state of the interface as it exists. So, and that's fine. And it's not a, you know, it's not a showstopper. It's just kind of not cool because it'd be great if you could get exposed to all those wonderful GPTs that are out there. All right, so let's uh, dig into this a little bit. So how do you use a GPT? Well, you pick the GPT you want. For example, uh, Dolly. this one's the picture. Turn your imagination into imagery. Now, normally when I want to do an image, I can just come back into ChatGPT and say, give me a picture of a rabbit um, riding a dinosaur uh, uh, like a cowboy on a bucking bronco. 
I'm from Texas, so I got to do that, right? So I put something like that. Now we're going to copy that and paste that uh, and use that again here in a second. But I can do something generic like that. It's going to go off and try to create the image. And we may get a decent image out of it. We may not. It just really depends. So we're going to kind of compare and contrast these. So, but this is just me in ChatGPT, just throwing something out there and going, gimme. And then it goes and tries to create the image. And we'll give it a second. And we're walking and we're walking. I know the hamsters are getting tired over there at OpenAI. There we go. Okay, what do we got? Okay, there we go. Riding like a broken bonco. I like that. Yeehaw. So that's cool. All right, so we're going to run with that. Looks good. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Now let's go to the Dolly specialized um, GPT. And then the first time you start using GPTs, it actually gives you an intro. Custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and capabilities for a specific purpose. Got it. So here we are. Now we're going to take the exact same prompt and see if we get something better out of it. Presumably it's doing some additional type of stuff to give us maybe slightly better output. Um, now these would be prompts that uh, internally it has things that it's doing for the GPT. So whoever created the GPT gave it special instructions so that when we give it our prompt, it's doing some additional work of some kind. Let's see if, if the output is similar, different, better, worse, whatever we get. Let's check it out and see how the Dolly GPT works. Now remember, these are all pretty new too. This, is, this just happened on November 6th. And not everybody got access to it on the 6th. A lot of us uh, had to wait. So, okay, right away I noticed it's giving us two options. So that's cool. And notice it gives us kind of this and this. Um, yeah, I dig it. Here's some scenes, blah, 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 cartoon style, whimsical. Feel free to take a closer look. Yeah, okay, I dig it. I dig it. But let's, let's modify it a little bit. Make it more realistic. And um, uh, uh, more like uh, a cowboy riding a bronco um, there we go let's see if that works so right away though it's giving us two images instead of one that's a bonus because normally it only gives you one so the prompt they gave this must have been hey give them at least two images to choose from uh, you know kind of a couple of nice little cartoony images we're giving it a little more instruction. Hey, give, make it a little more realistic, more like a cowboy riding a Bronco, although I could kind of like the dust. There we go. Yeehaw, look at that. Now that's sweet. Now compare that to what we got earlier. See, it actually put them inside of a rodeo. So there's a rodeo going on. Man, I love that. Look at that. Yeehaw, pretty cool. That is cool. So right away I'm seeing I'm getting better results here, right? And just to compare it, let's go back. I'm gonna take this just to be fair, do apples to apples, right? Let's uh, go back to here and let's do it with just without the Dolly, you know, specialized GPT and see what we get. Because this was actually a pretty good one. I kind of like this, but notice it didn't put him in a rodeo setting. Let's see if it does that with this uh, with this update. But, you know, again, I've done this a lot and I can already tell that the Dolly GPT is giving me a, a more refined result. Right. See there. Look at that. OK not still not as good and we'd probably still have to struggle with it and we'd eventually get there but we got there a lot sooner with with this dolly specialized thing right way better way better results i love that i don't know what that is flying in there all right so cool that's one example by the way as you use gpts they show up on the left hand side if uh so you can always click on them and go back and, and do whatever and every conversation that you have with the GPT is stored just like any other conversation you would have. So it's right here, rabbit cowboy riding a dinosaur. And then, you know, there, here's the chat we had earlier with regular chat GPT. And here's the one we had with the doll E, right? The special doll E GPT. Kind of cool. Uh, by the way, you can, you know, copy the link and do all kinds of fun stuff with it as well. You can download these for those who aren't familiar. I, I didn't really talk about, but yeah, you can actually download these and, you know, grab that goes into your downloads and then you can have fun with them. So there's all kinds of cool things you can do here. I'm going to give it a thumbs up because I really like that. I'll just submit my feedback. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the GPTs. How about data analysis? Okay, drop in any files and I can help analyze and visualize your data. All right, great. Uh, let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to give it uh, 
this, which is the United Nations uh, analysis of Canada immigration. And I'm going to say, uh, give me a full analysis of this. Now, see, I'm keeping it nice and generic on purpose because this thing is supposed to be specialized. So I should be able to just type something generic like this. Under the hood, it's got a whole bunch of other instructions that it's doing. And it should give me something, hopefully, really nice back. Appears to have several additional rows. Uh, might be further down the file. Proceed. So it's proceeding with the analysis. By the way, uh, yes, this particular file has um, uh, has the first 20 rows are just like a label. It's just a, it says United Nations, blah, blah, blah. So the data doesn't actually start till about 20, the 21st row or so. And it's figuring that out. And then it goes from there. So it's going to start skipping some rows and doing some stuff. So right away, it's beginning its analysis. It's going through its analysis, and it's, it's doing this. Now, I could do this, by the way, just at the main prompt and get similar results, but probably not as refined. Uh, would you like for me to proceed? Uh, yes, do everything. And don't ask me again. And we'll let it go ahead. Because I don't... I wanted to do the full analysis. So here we go. Boom. It's going to do some data cleaning. It's going to rename some columns. It's going to get some descriptive statistics or some trend analysis. The whole nine yards. I mean, it's going to town. Now, I showed how to do this in the data analysis section of how to get a job earlier. Uh, and I've demonstrated, and I will be demonstrating this in the data, uh, data analysis section of how to properly use ChatGPT. But... I like that there's a specialized data analysis thing here too. So now it's you can see it's going doing descriptive statistics and on and on and on it goes. So we'll let it run for a minute or two. I want you to see this as you're going to see something very similar in my data analysis piece, although a little deeper. But see there, it's already popping out um, charts. Now we'd probably have a course correct on some of that. And trend analysis, hmm, got the dates messed up on the years for some reason. Okay, we can have it redo that. But it's doing analysis on immigration over time. I don't know what happened to the years. That's messed up. That's something weird going on there. Here we go. So here's uh, immigration in Canada by region. Most Canadian immigration comes from Asia. Uh, again, it's got this total thing in there. We can get rid of that. Have it correct that. So it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop it. That's good enough. You get the idea. It begins to do data analysis. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, as we go down, I don't care about this. This is a ChatGPT classic that has no additional capabilities. Why anybody would want that is beyond me. Uh, game time. I can quickly explain board games or card games to players of any age. Let the games begin. Sure, let's give it a shot. Uh, how about explain um, Monopoly? To me. And so now I have a specialized, you know, chat gpt and i want to know about monopoly maybe i don't fully understand the game or i want to know a little more about it and here we go starts explaining it to me talks about the game setup talks about the cards community chest my favorite and on and on and on it goes so you get the idea and presumably you can do any level of game right explain the game go uh, ancient board game known for deep strategy yep China, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a hard game. <laughs> Without a doubt, it's a hard game. Um, so there you go. So uh, again, very specialized for what it does. Now, let's take this specialized thing and say, um, tell me about black holes. See there? Now notice it says, as game time, my expertise is in explaining, discussing board games and card games. For detailed information about black holes, a topic in astrophysics, you might want to consult a different source or version of ChatGPT. So there you go. It is highly specialized for the thing it's designed to do. And if you ask it to do something outside of that, generally it's not going to do that. So kind of useful. Very, very useful, in fact. All right, so what else we got? The negotiator. This looks interesting. I haven't used this one yet. Uh, I'll help you advocate for yourself and get better outcomes. Okay, this one I want to know. So I don't know anything about this. Notice for some of these GPTs, 
they'll have a nice little icon. They'll have a title. And then it'll tell you, I'll help you advocate for yourself and get better outcomes. Become a great negotiator. And then it has some prompting questions down here. So the maker of the GPT can, can kind of give you some starter questions um, at the bottom to get you going. And since I don't know anything about this, uh, let's take a look at what what's this thing could do. Could you role play a salary negotiation with me? Oh, nice. Prepare me to negotiate for a car purchase. I love it. Walk me through uh, figuring out my BATNA. I don't know what BATNA is. How can I manage my emotions when negotiating? Ooh, nice. Let's do the car purchase. I'm thinking about getting a car soon anyway. So great. I'd be happy to help you prepare for negotiating car purchase. To offer your tailored advice, I need a bit more information. Type of car, budget, priorities, research. Have you done your research? On and on and on it goes. I'm not going to do the full on thing. I don't think you guys care what kind of car I'm going for. But there you go. You can use this to begin that process. Actually, since we're here, I wonder if it would go outside its bounds since it's within the bounds of us looking at the car. Can you tell me the most reliable and safe car for 2023? I don't know if it'll... Uh, Various factors, blah, blah, blah. update and I can provide some general capabilities. But for the most current detail listings, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about where we can go to get some information. Now let's let's push it to the limit. Let's really push it. Can you look it up for me? So they may have limited it so this thing doesn't go out to the internet. Now, so you can actually, as the maker of a GPT, you get to decide if it can go out to the internet or not. So you may want a GPT that doesn't go out to the internet. This one, it looks like they've designed to not go out to the internet. So you get a lot of options when you're creating a GPT along those lines to tailor the GPT for the experience you want, um, you know, for the experience that, that, you, that you guys wind up getting. All right, uh, let's continue on. Creative writing coach, very nice. Cosmic dream, looks cool. Here we go, tech support from setting up a printer and troubleshooting a device. This looks like it'd be useful. How do I turn on my Google Doc and P uh, how do I turn my Google Doc into a PDF? Oh, sweet. Yeah, let's do that. All right, uh, Google Doc to a PDF, straightforward. Here's how you do it. Open your Google Doc, click on File, uh, select Download, okay. Oh, choose PDF, okay, you download it as PDF. Oh, it works for me, perfect. There you go. It's a nice little uh, simple tech support. Let's see how far it can go. Um, how do I use a managed uh, switch to um, uh, keep uh, traffic in check? Let's see if it if it can go that far. Using a managed switch to control and monitor network traffic is excellent. Ensure vision. Blah blah blah. Managed switches offer managed. Blah blah blah. Here's a general guide, and then maybe we can get more specific. All right, got it. Okay, yeah, I can dig that. Oh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Now, notice something that's happening here. As we explore, it's keeping the last two GPTs that we um, that we used in our list here. As we keep going, it's pushing out the others, right? So as we add new ones, the old ones get pushed out. It only shows the top two. Presumably, we'll be able to change that at some point in the future and have a bigger list. But for right now, it's just the top two, as far as I know. Hang on, they may have they may have actually changed that. Let me uh, refresh real quick. No, still just the top two. Yeah. Um, okay, so just the top two. And we can come back here. But now, when I get in here, notice my recently used shows the top three. So you get a recently used, and you get two here, and you get three here. But we've we've used more than that, right? We've used you know several more than that, or at least two more than that, and they're not showing up because they got pushed out of the list. Uh, um, now, one of the other things you can do is you have the option to keep in your sidebar or hide from sidebar. So let's say I really like the tech support, and I really like the Dolly. So I use the Dolly. Let's just do a blah. Should have it show up. There it is. It shows up at that point. Keep in sidebar. Notice if I decide to keep it in the sidebar, it moves it out of my recently used list into a list that I'm a custom list that I've created now, right? So there is an option to keep these around, right? I really love my data analysis. So uh, just do a blah. And, you know, I'm just trying to get it to show up so I can keep it in the sidebar. And there you go. So you can keep them in the sidebar for the ones you really like and then just rotate out the ones that maybe aren't as useful to you or maybe one-time use or something along those lines. 
So let's go back to our uh, list here. Um, there's several other things. I'll load more. Uh, you know, coloring book hero, laundry buddy, kind of cool. Ask me anything about stains. Sous chef, uh, help you get the recipes. Sticker whiz. I, you know, I've been wanting to try this one. Sticker whiz. Can you make cool stickers for my laptop? Sure, let's do this. No, that's one of the questions they had. Um, I like uh, D and D. So give me um, themed stickers around that. Okay, let's see if it can figure that out. Yep, Dungeons and Dragons, yada yada yada. I'm old school. I remember the uh, the uh, original D and D came out. I'm that old. All right, here's a few ideas. Blah blah blah. Ooh, let's do the dice or dungeon entrance. Uh, do them all. Let's see what we get. So it's going to create one. I probably should have said something cool like put them all into one image. That would have been sick. But uh, anyway, there it goes. It's going to do its thing. Um, presumably so I can get a sticker. I could download it, take it, and do something with it. Because I, I know I can't order it. So here's your stickers. Variety of elements. Oh, put them all together anyway. That's kind of cool. A dragon firing up some dice. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. It says I could order them. Okay. Um, I'd uh, like the, like all of them. Um, I'd like all of them. So let's see what it does. So it, it looks like it's going to take me to a place where I could order them. How many stickers? What size? Uh, let's do one of each and five inch stickers. Uh-oh. Ah, there it is. You've reached the current cap for GPTP4. Please try again after 9.50 p.m. It is now 7.12 p.m. So, boys and girls, this is more of the stuff I was telling you about where you run into these limits they've started to place on things. It is very unfortunate that they're doing this. And I really wish it wasn't the case. But they have uh, absolutely blocked our ability to go on and get more um, get more queries. I have to wait for two hours now, which I will do. So we'll go ahead and pause. Uh, or maybe, I, I think we've done enough. We can go ahead and end it here. I think you kind of get the idea. But um, this is one of those things that even folks who are in have to deal with. It's not fun. I'll be glad when they get their stuff. Just real quick, uh, there's a math mentor to help parents with their kids with math. Um, hot mods, modify your image of something wild, a mixologist to help you make mixed drinks, always fun, and then uh, uh, gins for meme to understand lingo and the latest memes. So lots and lots of cool stuff. I guess we'll we'll stop here because we're kind of forced to. Hopefully you get a sense of what the GPTs are all about, and hopefully OpenAI will get those servers sooner rather than later so that you can get plus if you don't have it and so that we aren't throttled the way we currently are. Not fun. This is Zane. Uh, let me see. Wait, hang on. Let me see if I've got any more slides. Nope, that's it. All right, this is Zane uh, with Really Easy AI, and I'll see you next time.